Hello everyone, welcome to the Mind High Podcast, this is Z, thanks for joining us. Unfortunately, in this episode, we had some technical problems because of which we had to stop and start the podcast over uh, once, and because of that, we also had to cut the podcast short, uh, so it's a little bit shorter than usual. Anyway, on this episode, Hasban, who's been on the podcast, who's been a regular on the podcast for a while now, uh, his good friend Tim Noah joins us to have a conversation about life, education, principles, drugs, chasing adrenaline highs, uh, the famous Muhammad Ali Vietnam War speech, and a bunch of other things. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Where you left out with your doctor friend? Yeah, what, so what I was saying earlier was that, um, yeah, my friend who probably spent about eight to 10 years becoming a physician recently just got very sick and he was in the hospital for a few months and he said he was it was so bad that he was just in bed like hallucinating not even knowing that months have gone by so something with his blood something got in his blood which made him super sick can anyone and, get that or it was just um that? yeah anyone can get that but i think he had he doesn't have i don't know the details i should but he doesn't have proper immunity to it Okay. So the thing is, if he goes back, there there is a chance that he <clears throat> he could kind of get that again. Like a oh, relapse. Because it, oh, it, because if he's a doctor, he'll be in that environment yeah, all the time, right? So, like we were talking about earlier, he spent a big part of his life becoming a physician, and now he's going into like physical therapy and like starting his own practice and something that he could have done maybe eight years ago if he needed to. But yeah, it goes along with the idea that. You nothing is guaranteed, right? You know, so, in education. So the fact that he got sick, he can no longer pursue what he was originally trying to do, and that has been derailed, and he's doing something else now, right? He's a bit afraid, yeah, of getting that sick again. Yeah. So yeah, so he doesn't want to be in that environment where he's, you know, open to all these. Or he's at a high risk. Yeah, at a high risk, right? Well, a friend of ours, uh, Hasban and I, is also is kind of in a similar situation. I mean, he went to a four-year school to be a, a commercial pilot. And uh, I think it was like his second or third year into the degree, he uh, he was flying one day and he had a, a seizure. Oh, and uh, when you have that type of disease, like the FAA will just ground you until you can, you know, prove to them that you're good without the medication and you can do things without, you know, putting people's lives in danger. Yeah. But he spent over like $100,000 going to school to be a, a oh, pilot crap. and it just like fell out of the bottom, you know, and like... I think that's kind of a tough thing for people to go through. Like, I'm sure it was really hard for your friend to have yeah. to put all that work in and then basically have nothing to show for it. I mean, yes, he still has that knowledge, but without that piece of paper, he can't really do much with that knowledge. Right. Can't practice what he studied and worked so hard for. Right. I can't even imagine what that would feel like. Because the bills will start coming in sooner or later where you got to pay for that $100,000 yeah. school student loan. Yeah. And then you're and going that, into it with not having that yeah. financial stability <laughs> so, that you were you know, thinking that was basically guaranteed. Guaranteed, yeah. So you got to work in like Home Depot or something to pay that off. With. Yeah. Oh man. That Luckily sucks. his family is well off so he'll be all right but if that happens to somebody who spent his entire all his life, all his money on something like that. Yeah. Money that he might not even have cuz it could be off loans, right? Most students just go off loans. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you're in debt for the next maybe your entire life if that happens. Or well, if you file for bankruptcy then you're done for another t 10 years to yeah. get credit. Credit's everything in America. Yeah. I mean to Especially from like a business perspective and like be becoming successful, if you can if you can get a good credit, yeah, you can buy houses, flip them, you can you know get credit to you can, start you can businesses, yeah. Uh, the more money you can lend and make good decisions with them, that gives you a higher chance to grow faster. Uh, this same friend, just to keep going on about this, uh, he's kind of a straight arrow now, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, he actually just got engaged. He doesn't he doesn't really do many drugs. He might drink a little bit, and uh, he wanted to be a cop. And I think he would have been a great candidate for it. And uh, I think they asked him in the exam, like, so he, you know, he did all the thing, he did all the right things. And then they asked him during the exam, have you taken any drugs before? And he answered that question honestly, because everyone does drugs in college. And because he answered honestly, he didn't get the job. Yeah, one of my friends had the same thing. Uh, I think he was trying to be a, a state sheriff. And where they asked him about the drug, I think, because he felt like that too, because he got... 
he got, you know, because like getting in, into those jobs is really hard. Uh, first, you got to, you know, they got to get the application. You got to pass that test and you got to follow a series of interview. So he was with with uh, he was right in line with the people with military uh, background because uh, <clears throat> out of the 10 people who were there. They called him and like four other guys had a military background mm-hmm. and they were going to I think they were hiring like a couple of like five, 10 positions or whatever. Um, but he, he was in the pool of getting the job. And when it came to that drug testing and they asked him and they, you know, went to a series of questions, okay, what type of drug was it this drug? Then you have to say yes or no. Uh, and based on that, he felt he didn't get that job either. How messed up is that? I feel yeah. like that makes you a more qualified candidate. Sure. I, I wonder what do you do in that situation? I know you have your principles, right? You, you have this principle. You never want to lie at any point. But if you're going through all the trouble of getting to that point, and if you're going for the interview, you know they're going to ask you, <laughs> right? Like, did you do any drugs? So I mean, what's the point of even going there? If you, I mean, we know what's going to happen. If you say yes, that's just a society we live in. You're not going to get the job. No, but as a cop, then as if you're a cop hiring another cop, you want more honest <clears throat> cops, right? You want honest, people that yeah, do. He probably it. thought of it as a good thing, like they're yeah. trying to test him to see if he's sure, going to, sure. you know, like for, in terms of transparency and doing sure. the right things and ethical things. That yeah. by being honest, that it's yeah. a, that that is what <clears throat> cops are supposed to be in a in, you know they're supposed to be a symbol sure. of honesty sure but I, if you're working with probability probability would tell you that you're not going to get the job <laughs> right i think the main issue wasn't the fact that he had done the drugs i think it for them it was a really small sti- well not a small stipulation but it was kind of inconsequential to the question i mean i think the i think it's like a 10 year uh, uh like gap that you need to have from when that time was to that time where you're taking the interview and with uh the cpd it's actually zero tolerance for like if it even if it was like nine years and 364 days like yeah. you're not getting the job right so they put the time frame together for themselves because even during those whole um preliminary questions and stuff you're basically hooked up to a lie detector so it's kind of like you can't really lie mm-hmm. like yeah, you're still you. taking that gamble of are they well, gonna yeah. are they lie gonna detect. see this on the test anyway because yeah, right. you, know? you know you're lying if that thing spikes right and you got caught anyway yeah you're kind of <laughs> screwed either way and, and, and lie detectors aren't even accurate and no. it's not. crazy that your empo- employment is based on an inaccurate test, test yeah that is not even admissible in court yeah. yeah yeah because it's all based off of stress levels so you could be like really stressed out that day because you you know missed your bus to the interview yeah and that's what makes you fail that part of the test there's, there's, but how messed uh, up is the system so uh just to add on to this uh one of our friends who also worked for the government she told us that you know she never wants to do any drugs with us and she told us because not only do they test her but they can do a uh they do lie detector tests like impromptu lie detector tests and they'll ask her a bunch of questions so she can't even lie about it and this mm-hmm. is her job is on the line for this how crazy is that that we have systems in place that have really I, I don't get the use of it or what is the purpose but you know i just don't i just don't understand i mean you have people that have never done drugs prosecuting people for drugs so they're you know they're 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 like arresting people they they don't understand on something they have no insight in yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. the whole i mean the whole we talked about it before the whole war on drugs is kind of stupid and you know hopefully in our lifetime that shit will end you know, it is headed towards a positive direction of ending. So we'll see yeah. how far that shit gets. But like that, that's the biggest, I mean, that, that, in, that lie detector is a problem, <clears throat> but the, the, the war on drugs itself is a problem. Yeah. And I think the way I look at it, it's not even about the fact that the people that are doing this are stupid or like it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't make sense. But why are they doing it? How did this all start? Wasn't it, was it Reagan or was it the president around that time that needed some kind of situation to kind of divide the people, and I, I and I've heard that it was something between uh, Nixon. I think it was that you're he was right, trying Nixon, to go after um, the African Americans. Yeah, he right? was going trying to go after the African community, and I think yeah. there's a tape, but actually I'll try to play if I can. Um, that there's a, there's, a, there's a recording of him saying, "Go after weed, go after the pot yes, smokers." That's exactly. So, and it's like a, it was just a political ploy. Yes, it was a political ploy to divide, so you can you can get the woke, you know, and you're like, all right, we're gonna go after these people. And you needed a reason to go after these people, and weed became the thing. Right. And it's still going on today. But oh, yeah. It's like when people say that it's stupid or it's this, it is, but there's a reason why they did it. And it's not something that's logical. It's just 
work for a political party. I completely agree with you. It's the same thing with alcohol. I mean, just because it's socially acceptable doesn't mean that there isn't something wrong with a person that wants to go out every Friday night and get fucked up until Monday morning until they have to go to work. Yeah. Yeah, I just uh, lost my... Lost my left side. Yes, uh, the right side for me. Very trippy. Oh, hold on. Sorry, Z, uh, I was trying to plug in the wire. Can you... You're going to have to keep talking until then. No problem. There we go. Good. There. Oh, shit. Oh, yep. Um, good. But yeah, you're trying to find the. <coughs> Here, I actually found it. I'm gonna put it on the Chromecast. Hold on one second. It's like a six-minute video. Oh, oh no, never mind. It's only fifty-three seconds. Hold on one second. Don't play it yet. Okay. Actually, never mind. Go ahead, and play it. I can. I I was trying <coughs> to make the record the volume, but we're just, our mics will just pick it up. Kind of hard to hear with their headsets on. Yeah, I'll just summarize it after. Yeah, so this was basically a push by Nixon. He's talking to someone yeah. and he's like, the Jews want we legalize. And he's talking about why the hell do the Jews want we legalize? And he just says that they're a great psychiatrist. And he's like, what the hell is the matter with them? Why do they want it legalized? We got to go hard on it. And then, you know, you can kind of see where the um, the state or, or the state's uh, control on marijuana started. It's probably, it started before that, but you can tell um I think that little, that by little clip uh, provides a lot more insight to why it's illegal in the first place. Because, I mean, what what does them being psychiatrists have to do with anything? Yeah. Clearly, it opens some doors in, in people's minds that makes you think differently about maybe the system or mm-hmm. the environment that you're actually in. Because if it's a, it's a, if it's a coping mechanism... And they want you to be suppressed and, and you know, um, kind of uh, behind the eight ball, as to say. I think I think that's that that shows it right there. It's messed up. If I mean, if it's starting from that high up and working its way down, then you just know the system's messed up and corrupt to that degree. Also, it's really it's, not just about like one person getting high. I, I'm sometimes don't know how to <laughs> articulate it. It's really not about that. It's what the state sponsors. Like for example, yesterday we walked through downtown. And uh, we were just kind of, uh, we uh, we weren't um, drunk, but we were high, but we went through a really busy area where there's all these people that are drunk. Dude, they looked like they were out of their minds, like the, the way they were walking. People are like half falling. You know, people just don't even seem like they're right. You know, they especially around like two or three o'clock. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, they seem like they're mentally retarded, to be honest. When you look at drunk people sometimes. <laughs> And, you know, we're just so used to it in our culture, but being drunk is okay. I mean, even, it suppresses emotion. even when we were standing outside the bar, when we were getting ready to leave, there was that car that pulled up and a beer can came flying out the back window. I yeah. mean, I mean, yeah. how is that any different than anybody smoking a joint and hopping in the back seat? Yeah. Well, yeah he threw like a beer Yet can you out. can go down to the, the local bread store and get a six pack for four ninety nine or something like you that. You could get enough alcohol to <clears throat> kill yourself at any time you, uh, yeah. Anytime yeah, you want. Yeah, they can't stop you from how much you're purchasing. Yeah. You can order enough, you know, like you said, to kill yourself and they won't the, all they're gonna do is just make sure you're old enough to do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, how, how do you <laughs> say his name? Frederick Nietzsche? Is that the right pronunciation? I think it's Nietzsche. Nietzsche? No, Frederick I think Nietzsche. it's Nietzsche. Is it? Yeah. Nietzsche, I mean there were two things that he really despised. And he was a great thinker, right? He despised Christianity. Yeah. Oh, uh, you could say religion, but he he was Christian. So you talking about a philosopher? That. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and uh, alcohol, and alcohol because he said that, of course, it suppresses your feelings and your reality in that moment. And he hated that. He's like, no, I want to face my reality so I can make it better, not forget about it for any moment. But does it though? I feel like it does. I mean, especially like tragic moments, whatever, like I mean, when, you know, I think it does open that can of worms more. You're saying alcohol? Yeah. It, it, yeah, it does. It doesn't always dumb you down. That's also true. It can, it does open you up in a certain way. It, it reduces inhibitions. I'm not, not, I don't think he meant dumb it down, but I think what he meant was like, whatever your reality is at that point, it would subvert it. It would turn your focus somewhere else. 
Yeah, you I know? can kind of agree with that. You know, if you're in a bad situation and you just go and get drunk, you can kind of forget about that situation to, for a while. To numb your pain. Yeah, sure. So, uh, yeah, I guess it depends on the person. <clears throat> I was uh, I was hanging out with some uh, uh, Marines this past week, and uh, I was just telling you guys about this uh, actually earlier, that they're adrenaline junkies, you know? So they chase highs, like crazy highs that I would never do. Um, and they got me to do a couple things, and I was like, man, you guys are wild. But they're, they, and they love to drink. They love to go out. They love to get fucked up. And they are very, it's, it's amazing how they can even handle them themselves drunk. But you put some mushrooms to them, you know, that wild side goes away. They're like, I don't want to take too much. I just want to take a little bit. You know, I just, if I don't want to go past my limits. So they have no limits in life. But when it comes to facing their emotions, who they are, um, it just seems that's like. interesting. It yeah. just, I was, I was like laughing at them. <clears> I'm like, dude, that's just so funny. Like you guys are adrenaline junkies. You're doing crazy shit. You're <clears> going out <throat> to the bars. You're ready to get into a fight with somebody. Shit, I wouldn't do, you know. But that's exactly what it is. Cause but they're not ha- ready to face their emotions. When you drink a lot of alcohol, it makes you, you might feel a lot more alive. And you're, if you're chasing a high, you know, you're getting, your ego is getting bigger and bigger. But mushrooms do the opposite. It kills the ego. You no longer matter. That's yeah. scary to people. Yeah, yeah not terrible. mattering is very weird. We're that so important the, to ourselves. Yeah, that you have no ego and you're this little speck of dot in this universe. And I don't know. And then you do have all these things in your mind that you can get, can get back to and yeah, and can magnify when you're on a trip. It's, it's incredible. That's why I love them. Hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I think everyone in this room is an advocate. <laughs> yep. Some shape or form. Um, but you know, like I, I was telling you that on the way here, but you know, the, the thing with facing emotions, like when you're risking your life and you're jumping off a cliff or something like that, doing, you know, uh, crazy stuff, there's that high, like, you know, like jumping off, uh, like base jumping, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you survive, there's no damage done to you or, the, you, I mean, it only lasts a little bit. <clears throat> but when when you are facing your emotions, that that's something, that's something more powerful yeah, it really you know, gets to you, and and you have all these demons that you've hidden in closets <coughs> that just oh, you know that those doors open up, and uh, actually we're with with who I think is a um, adrenaline junkie, Tim. Me and him talk about this a lot. And in fact, last podcast I was kind of talking about you too because I was like, you know, uh, um, you like basically action sports. Mm-hmm. You're you're a big snowboarder, mm-hmm. and I was saying that I think for him, uh, it puts him in the moment, it puts him in the now, and he's just really good at it too so i don't know maybe there's something about it though also like action sports specifically that's put that puts people in the zone i think it's a a a personal thing i mean i don't necessarily think it's just like actually the snowboarding or you know it could be riding a motorcycle or it could be bungee jumping if that's like what you're into or skydiving i think it's more of the the freedom uh at that moment there's not much else that can go wrong because you're so focused on what you're doing that nothing else really matters. And I think that's kind of like what alcohol is. I mean, it kind of takes everything that's going on in your life away for the moment. Not necessarily that it's fixing things or yeah, away. Does yeah. That. Yeah. I guess you could say that. Um, but it's more of, like anything else. It's a coping me- mechanism for, mm-hmm. um, I guess you could use it for anything. I mean, if you're just having a shitty day and you want to go out and have a good time, um, as long as you're being safe, of course, I mean, I think, I think anything is good for you in moderation. Hmm. But I feel like, so if you're snowboarding, you're almost like in a flow state, right? Yeah. So you can focus on something and do thing, incredible things that you might not be able to do unless you're in that state. But I feel like with alcohol, it just, I don't think you get into a flow state. I don't know what the difference yeah, would be. Yeah, it, well, definitely. Because well, I think I've spoken, I've spoken with this about you and you've told me that when you're snowboarding, you really feel like you're con- con- not in control, but you're at the stage where... You're able to be so hyper like aware and mm-hmm. you feel good about that, I guess, which makes sense. That's why people like action sport. I mean, you did skateboarding. Um, I yeah. just bungee jump recently. I don't I think that's why we do it, just to face that fear. Um also like for the drinking part, I think maybe one drink or two drink I, I feel like does do some good to you. Or like, you know, but it's when you go the further you progress yeah. in it, the the more diluted it gets. Uh, but I, I mean, I have experiences where when I left work with, you know, one glass and I was just having some amazing thoughts that were just like, I was like in a different, yeah, you know, outside sure. of the world, you know, like the thoughts that I would get on, you know, boom. 
uh, those just thoughts were just flowing like crazy, and I'm walking downtown, and some of the stuff that my what the fuck moments came from those moments, you know, just <laughs> after having. I guess two. we're hating on alcohol too much. We take uh, it back. Take no, it back. But it it, it it to a degree, like once you've you know passed a limit, and maybe that limit is probably after a second glass or third glass. It just it does, like you said, uh, takes your ego away, and I, I guess the reason it is kind of popular is because it does. I mean, uh, for us guys to go in a club and see a really attractive mo- uh, girl to approach, it's really hard when you're <laughs> when you're uh, uh, on your own. 100% sober. Yeah, 100% <laughs> mm-hmm. sober. So having that glass does, you know, take that thought process out and just just puts you out there. You know, you have you, you, give, you don't give two shits. It what's turns like something in your brain turns off. I'm yeah. sure yeah. there's whatever. That I think that's add. why it's really popular. That it helps, you know, mm-hmm. the the guys and girls in the clubs, you know. Um, take a little <laughs> of their um, guard down and yeah. so they're able to mingle and hook up you i think know? that also kind of plays into the fact why it's like completely like dark in the room yeah. loud music loud you know <laughs> bright lights flashing in your face it's yeah. just like a social distortion to make you kind of forget all of those kind of things yeah, like that you're the social shy anxiety. or like what do people yeah. think about you yeah uh, all that shit goes out the window yeah like, what you look yeah. like yeah your ego goes <laughs> out the window and that's why a lot of people that's why you have a lot of fights and shit too right you bump into a guy and you do that in a club and this guy's got to make a statement. Either you're going to meet a guy that's going to be like, you know, I'm sorry, brother. And then you both shake hands and move on. But there's always going to be that one douche that's going to be the biggest <coughs> guy that has to show his friends that, you know, you can't fuck with me. I yeah. am alpha. Yeah. <laughs> and few, few, I mean, the longer the night goes on, so many fights just break out as yep. that. <laughs> you know, there's the probability goes higher and higher for yeah. fights. When do you go When do you go to club and fights on, you know, don't happen? It's like a miracle. Yep. Like and that ego junkie is our president right now. Yeah, but I always like to picture like a, a weed bar, like you know, in our society, if we had a bars, people just you know, you know, so it's, it's a bar and grill but with weed. So you're ordering like you know yeah. gourmet burgers with complimental weed on the side. You're smoking. Guarantee. I mean, yeah, once <coughs> there there probably will be some fights, but not as as much as you. Would but not have. not fueled by that. I don't think. Yeah, I think it'll that, be more that changes be lovey dovey. Yeah. So those places actually exist outside the. Uh, United, United States. States. Uh, I just went to a place in uh, <laughs> Vancouver. They had like a like a cafe, and I was kind of confused at first. I thought it was just a place you could smoke weed inside, but no, they have food and everything. And you just you you can't buy weed there, but you can just take your own. Damn. And it's like a place where you eat and you smoke and you chill, and no one's bugging you. And what was that environment like? Um, I actually didn't end up like 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 eating there. I just hung out in there just to see it. You know, it yeah. was like a like a stop on my walk, and it was just cool. I've been to a place like that before, and the environment was very cool. At the same time, though, I do have one criticism of it. I was doing a thought experiment. If you remember this conversation, I think you might have walked out. Um, we we're talking about like our friends just got engaged, right? And there's really no better drug than alcohol for those kinds of o- occasions. Like weed wouldn't be as good. You can't be smoking the whole time. But alcohol, the way it gradually comes you up and how the, the, way, the, the way you pace yourself and how it comes. And you can kind of come down on it easy, too, if you drink a lot of water. Mm. That's like a myth I heard. Really? That coming down water. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that you... Time? Time is, is the only thing. Oh, maybe you're just drinking water for so long, the yeah. time. Oh, okay. Although water actually is, uh, I think it's more like a hangover cure, but he's right. It, because the alcohol gets into your blood system. Yeah. And the only oh, okay, thing you the can water. do with that is wait for it to you But know, it does help the next through. day hangover, right? If you drink a lot of water, I, f- I feel like it does. Yeah, because you're just cleaning things out of your liver and kidneys and stuff. Okay, but anyway, I was just saying, if you're at, at like an engagement party, for example, or if you're at a yeah. wedding, it'd be weird to have like yeah. weed instead of alcohol or mushrooms instead of alcohol. Yeah, everyone's like mellowed out. Yeah, yeah. Of celebrating. It's too lazy to get up. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> no one's dancing. Everyone, everyone's like, when's the dessert coming? Yeah. <laughs> Though I'm sure there'd be some great conversations. Yeah, but that's not some, why we're there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, every drug has its purpose, right? So Yeah. So alcohol does have its purpose. It's just that I wish it wasn't the main drug. That's all, I guess. Yeah. What is the purpose of meth, then? I well, th- people take methamphetamines, oh, yeah, like yeah. Adderall yeah. and like Ritalin are methamphetamines. They're just one one chemical compound that's different from the meth you see in the streets versus Adderall. It's, I forgot what it is um, or, or, or what it's called, but those kids in college are taking Adderall like crazy. Yeah. And... There's so many students nowadays. Like Adderall is huge, you know. Yeah, and we they're know taking that it was, meth. Yeah. They're taking speed. It's crazy, and we know it was used in the World War, right, by the Germans to get their the fighters, the all these guys, just focused on the task and not really think about why are we doing this. 
Just do it. Yeah, if you gave, let's say that, like, you gave mushrooms on a battlefield, what would happen? <laughs> Nobody Shit. would fight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what the fuck are we doing? Yeah, yeah I mean, that was terrifying. a whole. <laughs> that was a whole thing. I think we t- maybe we already talked about this in the last podcast, but the Vietnam War. Yeah. You know that went from you know the wars before where there was alcohol or you know other drugs to now you have weed and, and, and opium and opium and people <laughs> did not want to fight and they say that's why the we lost the Vietnam War because people were smoking weed and they're like. I don't want to kill this guy. Are you talking about people on our side were smoking opium and weed? Yeah, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. I think opium's are like like a chill thing too. I've never tried it, but yeah. that's what I hear. Right. So that was a mistake. According to the people in power, you know, having weed on the battlefield, people smoking weed did not work out. People didn't want to fight. Because I mean, it's bizarre. Because I mean, we're all, all are connected. Or it makes sense, by the way. Yeah, like why am I fighting? Yeah, what the, the, I don't know. Do you like what made what what got me here to sign up for this war? Yeah, or you, some people in the Vietnam didn't even <clears throat> sign up. They were just yeah. Oh yeah, they, they were drafted. Yeah, yeah. I think mm-hmm. there was a draft back then, right? Yeah. Do you see Muhammad Ali? Right, there was a nice video by Vox on that. I love that speech. It's by him. so good and like, man, I can't do it justice. But he's fight. Maybe don't we should it. pull it up. Mm-hmm. Don't no. play it, okay? Because I mean, uh, we don't have the correct audio set up. They're just gonna be oh, okay, being okay. quiet. Oh, it's gonna be mumbled. Right, right. Yeah. What if I put it on my phone and just put it to the <laughs> mic? Um. I feel like that speech is worth that. it. It's only 40 seconds long. Sure. Yeah. Let's see if that works. But that was him. Well, he did not want to go fight. He's like, my fight is over here. I'm fighting for freedom over here for my people. Why should I go over there and kill Vietnamese men, women, children, whoever? They didn't do anything to me. Why am I going over there? It made no sense to him. Yeah. And when you hear him say that, you're like, yeah, why, why, are, yeah, I'm, I'm playing it right why now. are we there? You know? My brother are uh, some darker people some poor hungry people in the mud for big powerful America and shoot them for what? They never call me nigga. They never lynch me. They never put no dogs on me. They never rob me of my nationality and rape and kill my mother and father. What well, I'm going to shoot them for what? How can I go shoot them? Them little poor little black people, little babies and children and women. How can I shoot them poor people? I don't just take me to jail. Ali more than held his own against students who had a far better formal education than he. I'm saying you're talking about me about some draft, and all of you white boys are breaking your neck to get to Switzerland and Canada and London. I'm not going to help nobody get something my Negroes don't have. If I'm going to die, I'll die now right here fighting you. If I'm going to die, you my enemy. My enemies are white people, not Viet Congs or Chinese or Japanese. You my opposer when I'm on freedom. You my opposer when I'm on justice. You my opposer when I'm on equality. You won't even stand up for me in America for my religious beliefs. And you want me to go somewhere and fight, but you won't even stand up for me here at home. Damn. Dude, I, I, that's so it's good, dude. That, that shit gives me goosebumps, <laughs> it man. It does, Holy yeah. shit. That's deep as fuck. And what's really that gives me goosebumps is the fact that what he's saying is so logical, yet... At that time, people didn't get it. Like, like he was thought of as being crazy. Yeah, and you still know? extremely true today. Yes. Yeah, it's so true. Right. Sadly, what, Those, like, what last, was that like forty that, like, years ago? That like yeah. last ten seconds where he goes, "You might oppose it when I want freedom. You might oppose it when I want justice." I love it, man. It's yeah. crazy. I mean, yeah, it's just bizarre that we we humans are like, you know, like we're doing a lot of great things, but at the same time, we're pretty damn evil, man. Like. The shit that we have done, the shit we are continuing doing, and the shit that we're continuing to allow. Yeah, it's uh, it's that, human, that there's a, yeah, yeah, there's a segment of people that are in power, right? Yeah. When we say we, I guess we should be standing up for things that are wrong, and we should voice our opinions so things like that don't happen. But there are these politicians that control everything, and they're the ones that are really setting the tone for what happens in the future. Right. They're the ones with the power. You know, it's the same thing with, like Einstein. When Einstein created all the things and all the ideas he had, it wasn't all of humanity that was super smart and got to where we are today. It was like a few people that really pushed us forward. Right. It's the same thing with politics. But the majority of us are in the system and playing a role, you know, and then we buy into what they're selling too, yeah, right? Yeah. So we're not smart enough for, to yeah. think for ourselves. They do a good job selling it to yeah. us. Yeah. So like right now, like what we can relate to is healthcare. You know, like, you know, there's a debate going on in our country with, you know, if it's a right or if it's a product. Yeah. And it just is mind boggling that this shit's even a debate. You know, like uh, Republicans will say, oh, it's an entitlement program. You know, why should I pay for someone else's health care? You know, like uh, they, they need to go out and work and get it for themselves. 
Yeah. Right. But but think about this. They're not willing to spend money on healthcare, but they're okay about spending the biggest budget for military, right? So isn't a military uh, entitlement program too, in a sense, I was thinking, because you are giving your money to the government to invest in military in return, they'll protect you. We're paying them to protect us. Why can't I just go out and buy my own guns and protect myself? You can do that too, right? Sure. So we're okay with that entitlement. But, you know, when it comes to, you know, people, kids dying from like pre uh, existing conditions or, uh, cancer and so forth where oh you got to go get your own shit you know and like the the amount of waste from the military budget w- is so significant that that we that alone could probably you provide know provide for majority of care free education and yeah at least the people that need it at least the people that need it more than anything you know i've heard this from multiple uh people in the military where uh you'll be coming back from a deployment and you'll have unused food unused um equipment uh, ammo and things like that and basically what they do is they just chuck it overboard because if they don't use it, they lose it. You Check know, it you, where? in the ocean. Holy shit. Wow. So, you know, if, if you don't use that, it's just like running a lemonade stand. You know, your mom gives you $10 for the year. At the end of the year, you've only used $9 to create that lemonade so stand. You, Next year, she's only going to give you nine bucks. Yeah. You got to keep the budget. Yeah. And that's one of the ways that they do it. But with all that waste, I mean, you're just spending more and more taxpayers' dollars on things that you really don't need, need to. Right. But 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 like we gotta have the biggest dick in the world, right? So we gotta have the right. biggest military to show that you know where where we can destroy anyone at a push of a button, or we can do, you know, take over or help out people, if you will. Yeah. But like I think that's just so like wrong. Like I mean, I I feel it should be a right, you know, just as much as you know the government protecting me is a right, also, right? We're not. We all come to America because at least you know. Uh, our families came to America because of, you know, not only opportunity, but uh, also security. There's enough security here that you're not, you know, the government provides you. It's not, and we're paying it when we're paying for all of this through taxpayer money, you know? I mean, we we actually uh, made a little quick joke about this last night. I mean, when was the last time you really had to think about where your next meal was coming from? I mean, on the walk, right. you know, what do I want to eat? Not how am I going to eat? Yeah, yeah you're it's just a big you're, difference. You're wasting uh, so much time trying to understand what do you want to eat because mm-hmm. there's so many goddamn options in downtown. Yeah, uh, you know you have almost every nationality serving you some sort of their food. And, right. You know, you're you're open to that, whereas so many people around the world barely have an option to find bread. Yeah, I mean you're you're yeah. basically eating uh, maggot filled rice. Yeah, if that's all that you have, or you know you're drinking water and hoping you make it to tomorrow. Right. It's, it's it's just bizarre that this is even a debate. I mean, yeah. it's well. I mean, the Obamacare is not a <clears throat> it's not a perfect system, but it, at least it's a first step, a first conversation. You know, to let's make the system better. Let's not strip it away. You yeah. know, that should the, the argument should be how can we make it more cost efficient? You know, how can we put this? You know, but make see, get it to work to the level that we want it to work. I feel like we're trying to make logical. Uh, explanation for why we should do what we should do but i feel like they're not looking at it i mean even if they're looking at it logically it doesn't make sense to me that they would ever come to the conclusion like the republicans that they have so to me it just seems well first of all you look at who does it benefit it benefits the top what five percent right the rich get the tax cut from all this yeah because the uh the major companies that are in u.s mm-hmm. wouldn't have to provide the level of health care because right now the obamacare would make them force them to give them a better option so that means they would have to spend more yeah because obviously the, the money would have to come from yeah. uh the bigger companies they would have to pay more in that pool so for the for the insurance to work so i saw this I on saw reddit this. today yeah, right yeah. it's called why should i pay indeed it's like a excerpt from an article from what somebody wrote so do you want to go ahead and read it z this is this is this is hilarious. I actually saved this to my Dropbox to read today. I just saved it on my thing, too. <laughs> Go ahead. So it was Congressman Rod Bloom in a uh, town hall, and he said, why should a 62-year-old man have to pay for maternity care? And then he answered, or somebody answered to him, I asked, why should I pay for a bridge I don't cross, a sidewalk I don't walk on, a library book I don't read? Why should I pay for a flower I won't smell, a park I don't visit, or art I can't appreciate? Why should I pay the salaries of politicians I didn't vote for, a tax cut that doesn't affect me, or a loophole I can't take advantage of? It's called democracy, a civil society, the greater good. That's what we pay for. Damn, that's that's amazing. Holy shit. Where was this written? 
Oh, this was on Reddit. I forgot what subreddit, but I saw it in the morning today, and I saved it to my phone. I had a, I had a hard time finding it. <laughs> but you're, too. yeah, you're you're always having. A, I mean, you're you're always paying for shit yeah, that but, you are not using. So, but we, but but we're, I don't want to pay for people's lives. Fuck yeah. that. I rather pay for parks and bridges, right? You know, there's even the debate by some Republicans that why should we, people that don't have kids why should I pay for education for kids? Yeah. It's, that's how just, insane that's just is crazy. that yeah, like absurd. you were never a kid yeah and, and you can't have empathy for people that have yeah. kids or think I, about the macro instead of just the micro exactly and you bring up empathy and that's a conclusion i came to i think they see what's going on they understand they can't be stupid they're no. just psychopaths they don't have empathy they don't no. they don't care about the rest i think part of it i think we talked it uh off off here and i think the part of the problem is it's well there's two ways to this one is that they believe in afterlife so they're only here for the now and this is all a test right so everyone's god's god has created poor people for a reason they've that's their challenge that's their test they got to figure out you know rich are rich for a reason because god has some sort of purpose that i don't understand so but while i'm here i'm going to be a good person i'm going <laughs> to do my life but in order to do that i need i'm going to provide for my family so that's part of the problem Right. No, I don't. I don't buy that because you don't. It, I you mean, don't. if you're if we're saying that they're hardcore Christians or they're fil- following that ideology, then it tells you to be good to your neighbors. Right. So that's that's the second thing I was gonna say. The part of the other thing is that I I don't under- understand what we talked about is how can a party of Jesus say no to healthcare? What would if Jesus was here right now and they offered him you know rep- repeal and replace Obamacare? Jesus, what do you say? I'm pretty goddamn sure he's going to say no. Like, he was all for the poor, right? Right. Like, why the fuck would he want to move the money up to the rich? Like, uh, of course, he's going to say, like, you know, Jesus will go out <laughs> of his way to make sure that other people are eating and not him. There's so many stories or, you know, scriptures that you can read that talk about those things. And the people that are the most religious or act the most religious in the Republican Party are all about hurting the poor. That's their whole agenda. You know, like gerrymandering. Uh, I don't know if you saw a good special on it on um, last week tonight with uh, Oliver, John Oliver. Yeah. Where they show how they make it so hard for the poor districts. They'll draw the lines where they'll make it incredibly hard for them to go vote. Mm-hmm. And and they'll, 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 they'll gerrymander like certain districts where the borders are drawn, where people vote. Where if there's enough d- uh, Democrats in their area, they'll, they'll put more lines and divide that area. Yeah, they up. dilute the vote, right? Yeah. So then that means that their vote won't count in that district so that points will go to a republican yeah uh and it's just sad that they go out of the way to pick their party Mm -hmm. over country i mean i do in that same special they did say that democrats did that as well when they had the chance correct just didn't do it as effectively so i don't know man this whole political system and that something like this is allowed just kind of boggles my mind yeah like a person of faith should not be saying that we need to, re- re- you know... Are they a person of faith? Man? I mean, not, I find not it hard. I'm saying it's definitely just a tool. I mean, yeah. for, but, for uh, me, I mean, there's there's always been that political statement of church and state, yet after every every goddamn presidential address, he says, God bless America. Yeah. I yeah. mean, this isn't... Th- I, I can't, for the life of me, understand why people consider this a Christian nation. Yeah, like back, in, 60, back in the day, in the 1800s, that was pretty much all that was here. But that doesn't mean that everybody in this nation believes that. Mm-hmm. So it, right. it personally offends me when I hear that. And uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, back in the day when we used to say the Pledge of Allegiance, yeah. God was never in the Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah, it wasn't added, added until like 50, 60 years ago. I think it was like 1950 they added it. Yeah. So that's just another tool of manipulation. They just use that to make <clears throat> you think a specific way. Just right. like school. I mean, it's just a systematic thing. Right. And then maybe in 50 years when atheists or maybe in 100 years are the majority you won't have that anymore you will have politicians saying I mean, you could even take it the other way i mean if if um islam takes over they'll change it to allah but does <laughs> it does it really mean anything different no, it's right. all the same no, to no. me in my opinion i agree, right. it was, I agree. it's just a tool they're just right. saying that to same you know bullshit. get the votes so it was not in the original pledge of allegiance it was added in 1954 mm-hmm. wow that's recent yeah. what happened in 1954 uh, the last change in language came on Flag Day in 1954 when the words under God were added. Hmm. hmm. I guess, I mean, God has always been used to unite people. Right. You know, I mean, we know that even Islam and Christianity, when they were kind of struggling, it was different countries and, you know, powers like the Roman Empire looked at God and saw that, oh, one God is a really good idea. Mm-hmm. You know, let's bring Christianity because it was dying out. Right. And they used that to bring all these different uh, under Roman control places, under one umbrella, 
it was easier to control them that way. I think it was uh, a zeitgeist I watched on Netflix where it t- actually took religion back. And it all comes back to the same thing. It all comes back to the sun. Sun was the first god. god People right. worshipped the sun. It came up. It went down. It was yeah. a mystery. Nobody <laughs> yeah. understood how that happened. And also right. provided security. Because right. when, when the sun was out, that was when you were the safest. <laughs> exactly. So that's when God is protecting you. And as soon as God goes away, you're in the dark and see yeah. the creatures. Should go back to worshiping the sun if you really think about it it's we awesome. should yeah. it makes sense it gave life we came from a star that we're blew up and now we're dust. here i mean yeah. i think that's kind of the the battle that religion and science is is continuously played against each other because back in the day you know religion if you're taking it to the sun aspect of it is more scientific than not just because they didn't have the facts yeah right. i mean it's still very scientific yes but nowadays it's it's this ideological thought Man. of a person which really blows my mind i mean you can take a telescope and look up there i don't see a big guy up there you no. know, with a bunch Dude. of strings and stuff and you're exactly right religion you know it, it's absolutely a f- it's philosophy mm-hmm. you know and then you got and then science evolved from it when you got experimentation and you were able to actually carry out observation and be like this is true and this is not yeah proving it is is one thing i mean having the thought that's that's that is like the top notch but just yeah. having that backup proof i think that explains everything because if you can find the holy grail i mean bring it to me and i'll i'll believe oh, yeah. every word you have to say yeah, <laughs> you exactly. know what i'm saying yeah. show, show me a picture of a guy coming out of a grave yeah. right um do like to a perfect like uh, segue into this is like the neil degrasse tyson uh lecture that i shared on, on our whatsapp group um remind me i think we should share on facebook too and i think and, you know for our listeners to check that out a great lecture he just kills it first first he talks the, the subject uh of, of the dis- uh, discussion was uh, intelligent design mm-hmm. and he starts off by going into the history of like uh so first of all he says like you know how many scientists in america do believe in intelligent design it was some well, no, the first one was how many people in the country believe in intelligent de- design. I forgot the percentage, but it was some sort of high percentage, like 90% of the people in the uh, United States. And I think it's around like 2011 this lecture was done. Now, when you say intelligent design, you mean like a God. supreme creator? Yeah, okay. like God. Uh, so like 90% of uh, the people believed in it. Uh, then, he's, then, then the next thing was like, okay, so out of that, how many scientists believe in intelligent design? And it was some... I'm sorry? Is it still recording? Yeah, it is. Sorry, okay. So um and then, then even between that, did I do something different? No, yeah, the, the lines weren't going. But go on. I actually also listened to that deal the grass Tyson thing. I just want to make sure it didn't get cut. Hold on, let me see. All right, so like that Neil deGrasse Tyson thing um, was saying that. Um, so yeah, like how many people in the United States believe in intelligent design? And he's you know, uh, and based on a survey, it was like about ninety percent people. And then how many of those scientists? Uh, believe in intelligent design it was a really small percent i think it was like about 40 percent uh or yeah about 40 percent then he's like uh then he's like okay how many of the elite uh people believe in intelligence uh, the elite scientists how many of them how many of them do not believe in uh, intelligent design and he said 85 percent so the article then he was saying it should not have been focused on why majority of the scientists don't believe in intelligent design, but saying why don't hundred percent of the scientists don't believe in intelligent design? Then he goes into a series of like uh, uh, great thinkers that have passed our time, and and then he sh- he starts with like Galileo to Isaac Newton, and Isaac Newton is a good example to you know to make the long story short. Um, what what it says is uh. Like Isaac Newton, like uh, had some sort of like someone asked him a question or something like that, and he uh, to ask ask him to solve a problem. I forgot what that uh, uh, problem was. So in order to answer that guy's question, he had to go home and he created calculus to <laughs> answer that question. Yeah. Um, so this guy was one of the greatest thinkers of our <laughs> time. You know, the, one of the most smartest person. Um, but there was this problem that he had where he came up to it and he he couldn't see an answer to it. So then he then he resulted back in saying mm-hmm. it has to be god it has to be intelligent yeah. design so the fact that god created this or a god's a factor of this thing that i can't figure out i'm gonna stop working on it was it the motion of the planets i, for, I forgot um go on uh but it, yeah it was something like that where he couldn't figure out some sort of equations to explain something so then he's saying if i can figure it out then god has a role in the it. the default so, answer was jesus did it yeah so then he's like okay i don't have to think about it so but as uh, soon as he died like a few decades later someone else looked at the problem that didn't believe in god or didn't uh emphasize his uh 
belief in God that yeah. much, looked at the problem and solved it within a week. So yeah. they're saying some, something that Isaac Newton should have solved with, in his sleep, he stopped pursuing that, uh, uh, um, that quest of solving that knowledge because he just thought mm-hmm. of God is playing a role and God is beyond me so I don't have to figure this out. Yeah, so, and, and sorry, keep going. So like, to the, the moral of his uh, uh, or lecture was that anytime uh, our great thinkers uh, answer the, the problem to the answer is God, that answer always gets answered by someone else that doesn't believe in God. Yeah. Because they're not uh, limited. To their critical thinking is not cut off by God is the answer. Some people that think outside the box will look look at it. Oh, this is how you answer this thing. Oh, the sun comes up because of this. Oh, planets are rotating yeah, because yeah. of this. Oh, the galaxies is this because of this. You know, the, or it rains because of this. So anytime... Uh, when we when the first humans were came, came into the world, all the answers was God, God, God. And what he's saying is every and uh, of all the answers that we were God, most of them have been answered. Of saying it's caused by X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Right now we don't know what caused the Big Bang, but give it if we keep working on this problem long enough, we'll figure it out. You know. Uh, yeah. But anytime God's in the equation, that that dilutes, you know, uh, uh, research being done because. People won't think outside uh, out of the box, and they'll be stuck to their ways, and will not solve problems yeah, if, if and, this continues. And throughout history, God has existed, right? He, at like the edges of our understanding of anything, anything right. we don't understand, that's God. where God comes into the question. Right. You know, it was the same thing, like you said, lightning, like thousands of years ago. How did lightning happen? God of thunder, of course. Right. But once you understand lightning, you can be like, I don't, I don't understand it, but you mean, I see it's, what you I mean I do. it's not Thor's well, hammer? <laughs> but if I did, <laughs> yeah. um. But yeah, it was really cool to see that. And he connects, obviously, that golden age of Islam that we talked about before, how they were prevailing in so much uh, research and development. And yeah. soon this guy comes in, uh, a mom that says math is a work of the devil. That's All right. of a sudden, the innovation and research and development yeah. stops. And then they go, they pretty much, Muslim community just disappears off the map from, you know. From science, yeah. Science. There's only been one Muslim person that's won the Nobel Peace Prize compared to like so many Jews that and there's only it. like a few million of them yeah, yeah there's, there's only one or two Muslims, Muslims that yeah, yeah. so he was saying that I forgot how many Jews have won the Nobel Peace Prize but he was saying there's only like 20 some million of those Jews in yeah. the world compared to a billion Muslims mm. if everyone was into research and science how many of uh, research and development have we been robbed of you know because the answer yeah. was God yeah it's so sad it's, it's, yeah and he says he loses his sleep over it that's yeah. really interesting. I've never actually thought about that, but that's really true. I yeah. mean, how many great minds are being suppressed by, you know, not just that specific religion, but yeah. any religion. Maybe yeah. maybe like 10 Einsteins and Isaac Newtons or hundreds or thousands of them have come in our lifetime, but they just devoted their rest of their lives just praying. Yeah, I mean, how Buddhist, many diseases or like uh, social aspects could have been cured just because yeah. there was outside thinking or, you know, in-depth thinking on certain yeah. subjects. Yeah, right. it's, it's just sad, man. And you know, the funny thing is like how America was like, say, 50 years ago, Baghdad was like that in the golden age, like uh, the year 1200. It was like the melting pot. Yeah, cause because Islam was the most open-minded at that point. Like Christianity at that point was still kind of, uh, for some reason, they were... Not Real, open to really ideas. strict, yeah, very strict, right? Galileo, we know all the stories with how the witch hunts and all that. Mm. But at, at that point, uh, people were coming like from all over the world just to Baghdad to understand the world and do mathematics and science. Mm. And then since then, it's just gone backwards. Yeah, it's insane. Like we're the religion and the society is more backwards than it was like a thousand years ago. Yeah, I, I think. Go ahead. Uh, another cool thing he says is like the best way uh, for countries and communities to put a stamp on humanity is called is naming rights. W- once you're the first person to discover it, you get the right to name it. Mm-hmm. And he, then he, he was making fun of George Bush saying when the 9-11 attack happened that, you know, our country, uh, we have to look up in the stars or something like the, the, star, uh, the stars that the God made for us or something like that. And he's like, well, if you look at all the stars, they're all are named Arabic stars. You know, these are the same people that you're saying are terrorists, you know, like or that, you know, that culture or whatever. They they've named the most stars in 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 space. You know, like, why is that? Then you have to go back in time and see the research of people were this is, you know, in Baghdad, like you said, like the golden age of Islam was the one that was pushing this innovation forward. And because of that, they got to name things like algebra, you know, it's it's Arabic word. 
Um, but that's cool. To, a cool way to put it too. And it's like anything that you see, whatever it's named, the, the person that discovered it gets to name it, or whatever country uh, uh, discovers it name gets to name it. And then he shows like a decline of Islam oh, yeah. naming rights that's go down. Right. And they just disappear off the map. That's, that's, that's really funny because, I mean, if you think about America going to the moon, I mean, before they did any scientific things on the moon, the first thing they did was plant a, fa- a flag. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's it's wild. It's right. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's <laughs> the first thing. First. You don't even want to check out, like, the environment. The first thing you want to do is put up an American flag. Like, <laughs> yeah. come on now. How amazing would that be? Yeah. yeah. I, I would, that, that would be the last thing I'd thought about. Yeah. But I guess it's like an incentive. It's an incentive for other countries to push that forward so it 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 works out i think overall great for humanity because if if countries are trying to see who can have the first space race or now it's ai race Mm -hmm. who's going to get that ai race Mm -hmm. first and whichever country does is going to get to name it and control it what a game changer that's going to be yeah much more than anything before it yeah we talked about it you could possibly have a hundred einsteins under your control just working for you Mm -hmm. probably a gazillion I was actually reading this article just today. I didn't finish. And it was talking about how the scariest thing about AI is that uh, the algorithms that they use to kind of create intelligence, a lot of the people don't even understand how the results come to be, like how it even works. Just comes up from a supercomputer. Yeah, but it works, but they don't understand it. Mm -hmm. And people are like, this is the scariest thing about AI. Like we don't even understand it at this level. What's going to happen in the future? Yeah. But then I read this comment by someone on Reddit and he's like, well, we have humans that don't understand their own neurons and how it's all working, <laughs> yet we allow our allow our monkey brains to pilot planes yeah. and all these dangerous things. Yeah. Yeah. So why should we be scared of AI? Yeah. You know? I think is the I think the future, you know, does scare people and regardless of his uh, future with AI or no AI, you yeah, know. It's unknown like it's what's going to happen. Global yeah. warming. It's like darkness, you know, you yeah. get scared of the darkness. The fear is a natural instinct, but I think it's it's sad that I mean as far as we've come so far um that we've haven't been able to cope with that sense of fear i mean like hasban just went sky uh bungee jumping i mean i'm sure he had a natural fear of that and didn't want to jump off of a bridge but knowing that there's safety measures and in harnesses in place i think that you would think that that mentally would kind of make it a little bit easier but there's always <laughs> going to be that moment where you're like i'm not going to jump off of yeah, this bridge yeah. you know yeah. there's just what, that that barrier am, am i that one guy that you know the the rope snaps on <laughs> <laughs> right that's always going to be yeah. in the back of your mind yeah like getting in an airplane is fucking yeah. it's the safest travel but it's fucking scary yeah like, and, and that's actually gonna, a, that's actually a good point leading into ai as well because elon musk says that we shouldn't be scared of AI, but yeah, we should have safety nets, regulations, right? You know, in place so that if we do fall off, something can catch us. Yeah. But th- yeah, that, that that solving that problem on its own is kind of, kind of bizarre. Yeah. Um, dude, I bought this book uh, called Phenomenal Physics for like ten bucks in Barnes and Noble. Uh, I was gonna bring that today, but I forgot. But like, you know how every time we're talking about like uh, scientific concept, and we always stumble upon a few things. That thing's like a Bible, dude. Like you can turn to a page. It's just so beautiful how it's just set up. Uh, but one of the things I want to talk about was like, uh, I know we talked about it a lot before entropy, uh, but, but like I went into like a rabbit hole. I came on, upon the page and I, you know, read about the laws of thermal the dynamics and stuff like that. But like the second law of entropy increasing. Uh, I, the reason I wanted to share this story is because like I got really intrigued of what the patches said. So then I was just like, you know, going down the rabbit hole, like, you know, okay, how, how does this formula work and so forth? And I stumbled upon on uh, Khan, Ac- uh, Khan Ac- Academy, which of, for listeners that don't know it, it's a free, what is it, university or like, what is it, college? Yeah, it's like an Academy, online, right? online university where you just, it's just free um, education. It was started by this Pakistani guy, I think, uh, from like Harvard, where he just wanted to make education accessible for everybody. So there's classes on physics, business, science, technology, computer science, almost everything. It's just an online free uh, university. Yeah, so either you can go on their website and sign up, and I think they take you to a series of lectures that are recorded, pre-recorded, and yeah. w- but but they're all are available for free on YouTube. So I went to their playlist, man. It was like an incredible playlist. They had like a, a playlist for physics, so they start from the top and take you all the way through. Hundred and some sixty videos. They they're ten to fifteen minutes each. So I started watching them. Like holy shit! I was just so happy that I finally found what I was looking for in life. You know, it's just cool to read about like physics, but like sometimes you want to understand the formulas, and that's what this thing is offering so far. That might, that might be uh, nice to put on your Facebook page as well for your yeah. viewers to check into. Yeah, because like it, it not only physics, they had like you know uh, 
self finance. So if you're doing you know finance for your own home or accounting, uh, biology, history, all the topics that you're interested in, they have lectures on them. Now, do uh, you think there's like a, a quality standard? Like is it like because it's free, it's like maybe not as in depth as it could be. No, it's pretty. It's pretty high quality in my opinion. Really, I mean the 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 three classes that I saw. I'm not doing the homework part because I'm sure if you sign up uh, online. They'll make you watch a class and then, then they'll give you some sort of assignment after it. Mm. Whereas I'm skipping the assignment part and I'm just doing, just watching the videos on my own. That's the most important part, man. Yeah, I know. It so really I, is actually. If you don't you do gotta, the assignments, you don't really yeah. learn. Yeah, so way. I'm really intrigued and I am going to pursue that route. But I, I found it very useful. So, you know, the concept and ideas that we talk about. Yeah, is, yeah. It's cool just to take it to another level. I just wanted to share. It's it just you. really cool to self-learn. I, I'm going to try to teach myself. Uh, this is also all, all related with work. I was going to try to teach myself uh, chemistry <clears throat> through yeah. Khan Academy. This thing is so cool to, yeah. say, to like self teach yourself stuff. I mean, it's incredible. Imagine like people that were into knowledge a few thousand years ago, the philosophers, what they would give to have the information that we have no. just available yeah. to it's us. The access, like how yeah. quick it is to be yeah. able to find I was on the something. train. I was on the train while I was, when I stumbled upon Khan Academy. I'm yeah. like, and it was explaining uh, entropy. So I clicked on it. It was like a 20 minute lecture with these, the way they'd explained it was like, yeah, I was like, I felt like I was in a class. I'm yeah, like, holy people shit! Spend, <laughs> people spend hundreds and thousands of years building on information, yeah. learn all the stuff, and you can just click on it and learn about entropy, the motions of and, the planets, and all and, that. And uh, if if Neuralink works out, you can actually download that stuff to your brain eventually. Yes, yes. within the next five, ten years, and maybe you, ten, fifteen years. Which is also an Elon Musk company, a yeah, new yeah. one. Yeah. So if Neuralink works out and you have brain machine interfaces, yeah. instead of learning it, you could just download download the data. I think I think now that comes full circle to what uh, Ali was talking about earlier about uh you know like sending messages to people's brains because if you have that technology everything is wireless already yeah, you can communicate right. wirelessly yeah. Exactly. Yeah. like we can be just sitting here just looking at each other and, just and i think that also <laughs> ties into our, our topic of uh language i mean that would pretty much kill language if you could just download thoughts what is the need to speak yeah yeah, like you can just speak through emotions rather than <clears throat> but the, the do words your, do your neurons need the language though it's not like your neurons can just... Well, I mean, what is the language? I mean, you have that friend who who has a hearing disability. What is a language? Oh, that's true. Like, if they can get... Most of it is a visual, too. Mm -hmm. like, but, but it is electrical signals that are just firing. Everything is all memories and every understanding that you have, every experience, that's what it is. Yeah, I mean, they're neurons firing. I mean, another thought I had today, I don't know if you might, maybe you, one of you guys might know, but, like, I was just looking at, at my daughter and I was just seeing, like, you know, what is the difference between her consciousness and mine's? Well, mine's is a little bit bigger, so I'm able to compute more data. Oops, sorry. That's my yeah, it's, yours is more developed. Yeah. You have more experiences. We learn everything from experiences. I think I it, mean, it's like, uh, you know, if you see a ball bounce, you know, she's going <clears> to <throat> see that thing go up and down, but you're going to say, all right, there's gravity there. You know, there's there's positive and negative pressure when that ball hits the ground, right. which yeah. projects it back up to where it, you know, maybe half or a third <clears> level <throat> higher. Right. And I'll, uh, what I was at that time was uh, trying, to under, trying to picture <laughs> or the structure of my consciousness. So I was trying to see what is so much different from her consciousness to mine. Yeah, she's self-aware. Yeah, she's learning. But I'm I, obviously I, at the degree. No, I'm oh, sorry. I was going to say, I feel like it's not consciousness that's different mm -hmm. it's that she has more learned you have more learned experiences because your brain is like a learning machine right so you have more recordings of experiences right but if you teach me a concept i will learn it faster than her right right yeah but that's yeah. also building on what you already know that's yeah. why you'll be able to learn that new concept and you have that that ability to retain more and knowledge. she'll be able right. to learn language but faster I, than you I, can but I'm yeah, but I'm sure there is <coughs> her brain is not fully developed yet so she right. might not ponder off and, and discover things right right so what I was just thinking was like, I was just trying, you know, I, I think I talked about it in the last one. When I picture consciousness, I picture a black dome. So I was just trying to see like what makes a different, hers and mine's different. Then I start thinking about my own, you know, at what point does my brain stay at this state, you know? Because you, cause, um, what I was thinking is, you know how our blood gets recycled every, I don't know if that's like. I think we looked that up on a, uh, on a and pod. Not all no. of it does, but like. Oh, no, that was cells. We did cells, and it turned out yeah. cells don't recycle like we thought. Let's see about blood. Um, or like, or like, or, or at least our skin, you know, we shed skin all the time, and we're mm -hmm. replacing with new skins, right? Does our brain do any of that, or? Well, there is a stage where your brain stops developing, right? I, I guess we can Google that up. There is a point where it's no longer developing more, and it's done. So there's a and term called neuroplasticity, which is how, how malleable your brain is to do information. So yeah. Layla, for example... 
she uh her brain is i don't know how to, how to say this the right way but it's a higher level of neuroplasticity meaning that she can absorb new information better and take it in and internalize it compared to us for example if we try to mm-hmm. learn a new language compared to her so there is and yeah. as you grow it decreases Right. And that's why core beliefs, which we talked about, are so important. The core beliefs that you have at a younger age are very hard to change later on. We did a whole video on that, right? So when you get to a stage when you're like 20 and you believe something your whole life, it's going to be really hard to change your mind on that. Right. Because you learned it when your brain was super malleable. Right. That and also uh, what I was wondering was, you know, like like our skin, for example, like how we shed and we grow new skin. Mm -hmm. Is there something like where our brain does that same thing, where it sheds a little bit of it and it makes a new one? Well, brain it, cells die, right? I mean, I, I wonder if you can look up how what causes brain cell death. I know that quite a few drugs do it. Alcohol does it. Right. So let's say uh, let's say if they do die and they, they, we create new brain cells. So at what point does our brain fully get recycled <clears throat> at one point and our consciousness still remains what it is? That's kind of trippy. Hmm. You know what I mean? Interesting. I don't know if brain cells... I would think they don't recycle, would they? Are that, you that, that's, that a, that's a thought I had, and I was going to pose that question here. I didn't do any research on it. But uh, it was just one of the thoughts that I had today when I was hanging out with her. Mm. And I was like, at one point, like, does my brain, at some <coughs> point in my life, does it keep creating, not like the, yeah, I guess the brain structure. Like, yeah. like the example, like, you know, the, when we uh, lose blood or something, we will create more of it. Mm-hmm. Well, or are I we guess, shed skin? I guess Hasban is looking that up, but there is there are a few or things that there are a few things that uh, kind of dumb down your brain in a way. Yeah. And that is like for one thing is like if you breathe through your mouth, it's really bad. You should always breathe through your nose because you get more oxygen to your brain. <clears throat> and they found through research that people that uh, don't breathe through their nose often enough mm-hmm. tend to have a lower IQ well, because your brain doesn't get enough oxygen that, that, to compute. That, that explains uh, Packers fans. Oh, <laughs> explains <maybe>. my life. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's just uh, I've always heard so many people say something about uh, people from Wisconsin who breathe through their mouth. Oh. But, uh, <laughs> I've never heard anything like that, which yeah. you, which you just said. Yeah, yeah. There's actual research that shows all this, and they talk about how uh, it actually even changes your uh, face structure. People that breathe through their mouth tend to have a different face structure. Maybe the jaw structure changes. Yeah, jaw structure changes. So there's a lot of things that happen, and I think there's a difference of twenty percent or more of how much oxygen gets retained in your brain to function. Right. Because the nose is built to breathe. It has all the functions to give you the proper air, to keep the proper carbon dioxide levels and oxygen levels. Right. But when you breathe through your mo- mouth, it's unnatural. I wonder if it's more so that you're, you're breathing through your mouth is more so to get oxygen to your extremities and your body, and nasally breathing or breathing through your nose is m- more for your puts brain. more into your sinuses, which is all up in your eyes and your brain and everything like that. So Absolutely. That's real interesting. I've never actually yeah. thought about that. Yeah. Hmm. It's going to change my life today. So, <laughs> <start breathing. laughs> okay. So, I can't find the age of um, brain cells, but brain cells are not like red blood cells or skin cells. For example, I think uh, sperm cells, for example, only last like two weeks. Red blood cells, I think it's at four months. And your neurons, which are also cells, by the way. Um, are your brain cells actually? Um, they actually are built to last, and I can't find an exact timeline, but they're supposed to be uh, lasting really long. Mm. And there's this process called neurogenesis, um, which is in your hippocampus, which is where learning and memory happens. Mm-hmm. And you can actually have new brain cells form too. Shit. So you can have. That's so, interesting. Yeah, it's called neurogenesis, meaning literally the forming of the neurons. So what I was thinking at that point was, if that process is taking place, mm-hmm. is my consciousness the same, or am I just adding to it? You know what I mean? If consciousness is this black dome that I talk about, when I'm adding new blood cells, it is just. For me, okay. So I guess you have to first. How do you define consciousness? For me, it's just the the feeling of being, some, just being something, right? right? But you, but there's something has to create it, right? So I'm like a brain, for example. But if, if if a brain creates new of itself, does your consciousness grow, or is it, is it the same? We can't say it's, a, it's it's not the same because it did do something different to add on to itself. Hmm. I guess. But I guess if you as a person don't change, and then there's no. <clears throat> also, you you also form uh, new <coughs> new uh, neurogenesis also happens on. Um, um, mushrooms, by the way. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, so uh, I, so I think I got a better um, understanding. So neurons, I think, last forever, as far as I can tell. So you, okay. the, the neurons you have last forever. 
Now, there's certain diseases or head injuries that can crush neurons. So if you have a stroke, for example, that cuts, yeah, that cuts off blood and that will kill uh, uh, neurons. That cuts uh, oxygen uh, to yeah, your brain. Yeah, it I cuts think. off the blood flow to the brain. Um, also, a, also, Alzheimer's. Uh, so there's things called neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's or Parkinson's uh, where the nerve cells can be damaged in many ways. And there's dementia, there's ALS. So there's actually neurodegenerative diseases mm -hmm. that kill off those neurons. Right. So bizarre, man. All those things make up you. Yeah, but so but I never knew that, that they actually last, mm -hmm. I guess, as far as I can tell right now, they last forever. And um, you can, scientists used to think you can't make any new neurons past the age of two. But now they're finding out that the hippocampus, like I just uh, mentioned, has the potential to still generate new neurons. Yeah, so, so to me, I think your consciousness would not grow because I think consciousness and intelligence are different things. You can, for instance, you can build a super smart computer and it could be super intelligent, but it could be unconscious. So intelligence and consciousness don't have to be together. So right. when you learn something, if you grow neurons and you're getting more intelligent... That's, that that doesn't necessarily have to mean that your consciousness grew. Oh, so here, uh, so the example uh, analogy that I can think of, let's say pretend if your consciousness is a car, right? And you change all the four tires out. So you have new tires in that car, but you're, that's, the car is still the same. Yeah. So let's just say if, if I was able to do that to the whole brain and you still say the same, that'd be, that'd be weird. That well, would be. And then the other thing is that just because you mess up some... Um, uh, neurons doesn't mean that other neurons that work can't take over for the ones that don't work. Right. So our brain is a fucking complicated. Yeah, uh, there's like that system. left right brain. Yeah, system. Well, yeah, I remember we saw that video. So like if, when we when they when we do transfer our consciousness into a chip, that's what it will be. It will be taking you and putting you in a chip. We hope so. What if your consciousness doesn't transfer? What if that feeling of being doesn't transfer? You just Let's transfer your memories and your uh, uh, problem solving skills, but there's not there's the lights aren't on. Yeah. There's nothing in there that's fe that feels like being in there, but, but let's it's say doing it things like you. But let's say if we if it does do it, and like how do you figure that out? How do you? The thing is, okay, so if you transfer everything to that computer, how do you test that that thing is feeling or it's it has a feeling of being something? You know, conscious. Like it could. Let's, mimic. Say, let's say if it transfers you and you come out and you feel the exact same right now, but when you look at yourself, you're a robot. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, that would be insane. And I was thinking, what if that is an illusion too? What if what if being transferred into a computer and now you're like, you have this feeling of being that you're conscious, but what if that's also like a simulation? What was that movie with uh, Johnny Depp where he died and that's actually what they did? She downloaded his subconscious and implant, oh, never watched implanted that movie. it into... Yeah. Uh, Transcendent. That's Transcendent. what it is. I haven't seen it, but yeah. It's kind of like on the same topic as RoboCop. Yeah. I mean, he's kind of like a robot, but yeah. he has a human personality and conscious... Well, not a human personality, but he has he's <laughs> conscious, but his... his, his um, his physical being is a robot. Yeah, and the way he processes things is more systematic than, you know, emotional. Right. And that kind of goes with a Turing test. Like if you build a robot, at, so you do the Turing test to be like, all right, this thing is conscious when it can create its own solutions to a problem that you didn't program into it. Mm -hmm. Like if it does something you didn't program into it. But how does that, I still don't understand how that proves it's conscious. What if it's just super intelligent, but the lights are still off? inside of it for me consciousness is more of a self-awareness like where you fit into the universe or into your own natural surroundings i don't think it's it has anything to do with uh how smart you are or anything like that or what you know i think it's yeah, just right. how, your ability to see that you're like you said earlier a small speck of dust in a very exactly. large I like object how sam harris puts it too i never thought about this way but uh consciousness is all that there is and in some ways it's a short-term memory yeah that makes sense. And he also says that it's just, sim if he was to simplify, he says just a simply the feeling of being. That's all it is. Yeah. If you feel like you're something, you're conscious. Yeah, exactly. It, instead of making it really complicated, it was like it's just on one level, <clears> it's <throat> a short term memory. And then on another yeah. level, it's just being. What's right. that? Arkham's Razor? Uh, yeah. 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 Arkham's Razor, the, the, usually the simplest answer to a question is the answer. Yeah. Or, the or it, should be per it should be the preferred answer. Should be the preferred answer. Right. But that's where I think, like, then the, the Turing test doesn't, the Turing test doesn't really work then at that point, because I feel like you're testing for intelligence, not consciousness. Um, wait, repeat that one more time. I was saying that's where I feel like the Turing test doesn't work, because that's our 
uh, like de facto test right now to test for consciousness. Right. But I feel like it's testing for intelligence. If a computer is able to come up with a solution on its own right. without your help, to me, that's something that's intelligent, not exactly conscious. But I mean, how would it... So- I mean, it would have to be conscious to solve, solve it, no? I don't think so. Like, you can you can create something very intelligent. Yeah, you can I create algorithms like that like can, like, you like know. A, like that, uh, like the AI chess that can beat you in chess. Yeah. It's making those decisions. Right. So is it conscious? Are the lights on? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I guess you, I, you, I just, how do you figure that out? That's, that's a very tough problem, I think. Is Yeah, so you can just say it's a bunch of algorithms there based on the, the spread of the, <clears throat> the, the of the board of the checkers yeah. is going to make this decision yeah. so it's not really but it is conscious because <laughs> it uh damn, i don't know or or maybe it's not a problem you know I, I sometimes think of it like are we over complicating consciousness like what if there is so, no separation between consciousness and our brain what if this whole feeling of being is also just a simulation by the brain you know just to get things done that it needs to to keep surviving mm-hmm. like we feel like Oh my God, you know, I'm this thing, which we are. Right. But what if that's also something that's simulated by the brain? Yeah. No, I see what you're saying. Cause like, I'm just going back to that, the AI playing chess. It is make <laughs> it is making a decision, but it's not, it's not aware that it's, it's, it's a thing, you know, it's yeah. just making a decision or yeah. it's just executing a decision. That's all it is. Or is it? Because I mean, you're, you, you're never going to be able to be inside that machine exactly. experiencing what's going on with that machine because technically that is a thought process yeah it is and that's, yeah. What I'm, that's what i'm like as soon as i said i'm tripping <laughs> like, think about that. <laughs> yeah think about it you touch something hot right what is that that's neuron signal sending all these signals to your brain mm-hmm. you're not actually feeling something hot and going like whoa that's really hot yeah but there are signals that are telling you hey you know there might be something hot there yeah but you could trick your brain mm-hmm. like we can actually send neurons through your brain without you touching something hot and you would feel like your hands are burning. Right. You could simulate that. Mm-hmm. How much of the world is being simulated by our brain? You know, we would never know because you would have to like step outside of it, but you can't do that. Yeah. Right? Everything we perceive so is through our brain. Now I'm thinking of like a, even a video game, like a Call of Duty, like when you have those AIs or computer AIs that are fighting you, they're also making a decision with the duck and, you know, like that yeah. shit alive. <laughs> Artificial intelligence, yeah. <laughs> like it's just insane. Some, but now it's become a norm when we play the games. So we don't. I guess this generation just takes it for granted. Like when you play some like Uncharted or like or you know Battlefield, the AI is pretty goddamn good. Like when you're shooting a grenade at them or something like, they go <clears> running, or they're making these decisions based on the algorithm that they have provided. Yeah. So like, what's going on there? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. And now you have you have emergent AI actually yeah. in video games where you're not actually programming for that AI to do something p- specific, but it just comes out of all the rules you created in the coding and you get this AI that you didn't even expect. More of a, like a, a reactive state. Yes, yeah. exactly. So it sees what happens and then reacts to it. That's, it's incredible. That's crazy. Yeah. It's not even programmed into the system, that's but it happens. That's insane. One would actually, there's actually another word for it. It's called glitches. <laughs> you know, when you have a glitch, that's not yeah. intended by the programmer, but it just mm-hmm. emerges out of it. I, and I think it's kind of like a, a fine line because kind it's it's almost like we're playing God. I mean, at what point do you consider that uh, a life form, you know, if it's if it's able to solve problems and make decisions for itself, at what point does it get rights? Yeah, that's a that that's I wild. think that that reminds me of Blade Runner almost a little bit, <laughs> like all those replicants. Like would they, AIs get rights? Whoever invents them. Well, yeah, they would. Or you, they would revolt against you, like they did in Blade Runner. Or, or you like just um, turn them into slaves. Or a surrogate with uh, Bruce Willis, where everybody's basically just like laying in bed yeah. and their little like drones are going out living their lives. Right. What do you mean, Bruce Willis? Uh, it's it's I, I'm pretty sure it's called surrogate. Um, basically, you're you don't really live your life anymore. You're just at home, and it's like the Matrix. You plug in, and then it's like a I don't know if it's like a virtual reality or if there's actually like a clone or a drone mm-hmm. out there like doing the things, things that, that you, you do. would want to like do. you're better looking. You're you're more uh, affluent. You know, oh, it's okay. just a lot easier of a life, I guess. Yeah. I, have, I haven't really watched it in a long time, so I'm a little hazy on it. But yeah. it's kind of like the same thing you guys yeah. are talking about now. Similar to like kind of Avatar too, but even, yeah, it's yeah, even further than that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And now I wonder, like, you know, where are all, like, we, we always talk about this, like, you're having these thoughts in your mind. Where are these thoughts coming from? Mm-hmm. What if there is an avatar beyond us that's controlling us right here? Yeah. And we just get this feeling that we're in control because we need that feeling or they want us to have that feeling if there was something out there to mm-hmm. just stay calm and 
keep doing what we're doing, you know? Yeah. Like, is this really hot or is somebody hitting a button behind me is telling me that it's hot and move your yeah, hand? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, think about it for a moment. We always talk about this. If you, like, right now I'm talking, I don't even know where these thoughts are coming from, but they just keep it's coming. It's bizarre. It like, gets, who's writing all this man, like, in I, my mind? I, I mean, my favorite times are when I leave work and these are the thoughts that I, you know, play around with. And they get sad, beautiful, and ugly at the same time. Like, you know, like, yeah, like... You know, like you like you said, like wh- where are these words and thoughts coming from? Mm-hmm. But but this is who I am, <laughs> you know. Right. Like this is me. This is my time. This is my moment. Yeah. But I can't figure out where these thoughts are coming from. These yeah. thoughts that make me who I am. But I don't know who I am when I think that. <laughs> you know? Right. And then I, when I think about that, like just as a thought experiment, let's just say our thoughts are not actually our thoughts. But then I get to thinking, and I'm like, why would somebody that's triggering these thoughts? want me to have these thoughts if they're not mine you know what i mean Mm. like why would they want me to question my thoughts who would want to who would want me to do that and then i come to the point like it's got to be something inside of me Hmm. or it's a system they want you to stay in that system so don't question the system yeah but i am questioning it yeah but 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 your your answer i am in control somewhat but your but your answer is to stay in the system though because you're because you're saying what is the system the brain or whoever is hitting the buttons for your thoughts. Well, or I can't leave my brain. I am my brain. That's all yeah. I am at the end. So you are you are who you are based on a person that's playing your life. You yeah. know, it could be a kid just sitting <laughs> and, and just hitting like on his laptop or some shit. Just, yeah. You know, this is Sims. <laughs> when yeah. we go to sleep, that's when he plugs out. <laughs> yeah. Or I think of it like as a computer algorithm, like No Man's Sky, right? You just have this algorithm at the beginning and you just plant a seed. Right. So all the code is already there, but now it just kind of goes into its direction, Damn. you know, wherever it goes. But that seed, that initial seed, that DNA and all that did you, was put in by someone. Did you see that other video that I shared about the quantum uh, ent- entanglement? No, I haven't. Uh, do you know what quantum entanglement is? Uh, I don't either, but I'll try to explain. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it, it's um, when you get to the subatomic level, like uh, what they show shows like... Uh, Every electron, I want to say, is um, when you measure the. I forgot how to explain. It. It's been a while, but like they show, like every electron is connected to a different electron somewhere in the universe. It could be within that within that universe, or I mean, within the planet, or it could be in a different galaxy. So over, could be light years away, right? It could be anywhere in the universe. So once you measure a one electron that's negative, you automatically. Since they're uh, entangled, they're tied to one another, one is going to be a positive charge and one's going to be a negative. As soon as you measure the unit of one, you can automatically predict precisely what that one's going to be positive. Um, so, so like the, what's it, the short, Shortinger's, what's the guy's name? Cat thingy? Shortinger's cat. Yeah, that one. So that, that one says like, you know, if you have a cat in a box, it's both dead and alive. So once you open the box and you see what the, what the universe is saying if it, if the universe is saying it's, it's alive there's a d- different reality where it's dead so based on each time when you open the box you're proving one of the answers uh, and they just done recently done a test to make that you know make that theory even stronger uh and they did it uh trying to take like the human bias away it was a really complicated way they did it but it was really crazy because what that says is like you are we are also made of uh, out of atoms are made out of electrons so whatever that makes you there's an opposite of your particles somewhere out in the universe so you both are entangled in one way or another and until th- like what they say is in the future maybe they can use teleportation that way wherever your other electrons are you can just teleport there and co- you know yeah um or maybe it's just not even maybe you're just a planet or a piece of a planet or just space time <laughs> you know mm. whatever your other because that it, that because what they're saying, it's, it's so bizarre and so freaky. Uh, I, I'm not doing the justice of explaining to it. Like, you know, I encourage people to like just Google yeah. or YouTube that video. It's pretty, pretty cool to look at. Nice. Um, and hold on. Keep going. I'm trying to see if I got a text message. I, I was going to say, I think we're coming up to the end here now. Yeah. I was, I was trying to say, are you trying to bounce too or? Okay. Um, in that note. Yeah, because I, I was trying to see if I can get it right with my wife. Um, but yeah. All right. Good podcast, guys. <laughs> well, could you, this is, this is going to be a short podcast, but uh, we'll make it up in the next one. Nice. Um, 
But uh, thank you, Tim, for joining us. It was, uh, yeah, thanks for having me. This is a great time. Yeah, usually ours goes on for like three hours. <laughs> I, this is great. I mean, the conversation was awesome. Yeah. A lot of topics got opened up, and I, I, I learned a lot more than I did before I walked in. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, thank you for joining. It was great. And for li- li- uh, people listening, you know, um, if you want to support this podcast, the best way you can do it is to obviously share with you know, friends and family and help us uh, spread this podcast um, as much as you can. We would truly appreciate that. And also, if you have not done so already, check us out on Facebook, like our page, and subscribe to our YouTube uh, page where we are creating these cool short videos that we'll be posting um, on there for you guys to check out. So once again, thank you for uh, joining us, listening to us, and supporting us, uh, and helping us grow. Uh, Until next time, take it easy.